Revelation chapter 1, I'm going to read 1 verse 1 all the way to verse 6. I just want to give us some grounding principles before we get on this journey of the Day of Atonement. A lot has been said and um, a lot can be said. <laughs> but I, I just want to bring some thoughts around the Word because the Word's going to guide us there. The realities of what we are to experience. Amen. Thursday nights, I tell you what, we've got one more Thursday night before the holidays. If you can make it come, it's going to be fantastic. We're going to really get into a few things and a bit of the word this morning. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. you got your Bibles. If you don't have a Bible, there's a whole case there. Put your hand up. Maggie will grab your Bible if you need a Bible. Put your hand up and he will give you a Bible. It's good to follow the scripture so you know what we're speaking of and what the word is saying. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1, let's start. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. He sent and he signified it by his angels to his servants, John. Underline the word signified. That means that every passage of the scripture we're reading in the book of Revelation, it's signified language. It's symbolic language. That's why when a lot of people come into the book of Revelations, they're wondering, what's a trumpet? What's a white horse? What's a red horse? What's a pale horse? Well, the scripture says that it's everything that was given was signified to John. That word signifies means it's symbolic use, meaning that he provides earthly images that are speaking of spiritual realities. Spiritual realities that we are going to experience when we allow the working of the Word to work in us. That's the very first verse of the book of Revelation, chapter 1. So if we come into this understanding, we've got to know that God is going to use signified language, earthly images speaking of a higher dimension for spiritual realities that you and I are going to experience in our lifetime. That's how powerful this word is coming. If you try and interpret this word, the book of Revelations, which is the, really it's the mystery of Christ within you. If you try to apply a natural understanding to it, you're going to miss the mark. If you try and put an interpretation on it that's private, that you think that will fit the word, you're going to miss the mark. We have to allow the Holy Spirit, who is the keeper of all truth, he is the great revelator, he is the one that's going to teach us all truth, he's going to bring back to our remembrance the things that have been done for us. Meaning he's going to illuminate the scriptures in order of us to be comforted that we might go into the understanding of what Christ has paid for us. I'm talking about the full redemption. Not just of your spirit, but the soul and the body. We're going into a place where God is going to accelerate the understanding for the church that she might be in a position to manifest the possession of heaven in the earth. I'm using different language today because we're going to have to understand the order of Melchizedek. Because according to the word, when you were born again, you were born into the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is under the order of Melchizedek. It's not a loose priesthood. If you've never heard this, tell somebody this morning, it's great to be in the house of God. Because the order of Melchizedek is actually the only order that will bring you through the afflictions, through the refining process that will cause you ultimately to become mature. It's the only ministry that can do it. <laughs> It will be like fire sometimes when it touches you. It will be like a refiner's fire. It will work you like silver and gold. But the order of it, it's coming from the order of Melchizedek because that's the only ministry that is permitted to minister in the kingdom of God. We are not in the church age anymore. Tell somebody this morning, we are in the kingdom. We're not going to go back. The church age is... Still open for those who are coming through salvation. They're coming through the baptism of water and the baptism of the Spirit. Passover and Pentecost. But those company of people that want to go on into the kingdom, those who want to enter to become one with, John chapter 1, 
or John chapter 3, it says very clearly, those who want to enter into the kingdom, that word enter there means to become one with. They are going to go on a journey to be led by the shepherd. We've only heard the ministry of the lamb. But we're going to have to understand the ministry of the shepherd, that God is going to oversee the soul till it goes through the required markings until the day breaks. So the Lord said, I am going to use signified language by his angels, his messengers, to his servant John. Verse 2, he bore witness to the word of God, to the testimony of Jesus Christ, to all things that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy. Keep the things which are written in it, for the time is out near. Verse 4, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you. Everyone say grace. Say peace. We are moving with the grace of God in this season to bring us to the place of our peace. You're going to come into so, so much peace, I tell you what, you're going to know what the peace of God is going to be like. It's going to be tangible, it's going to be real. The demonic dimension that you're dealing with right now, that's overrunning your vessel, the spirit of grace is going to take you to a place of peace. Comfort like you've never felt before. And it's going to be personal. And it's going to be experienced in the earth. It's no good speaking it in the spirit dimension. It's already done in the spirit. Melchizedek takes us up from the spirit realm and he also earths it into the earth. It's called the possession of heaven. Everything you speak out of your spirit, guess what, is going to be manifested in the earth. That's what the order of Melchizedek does. It brings it out of the spirit realm to the earth realm. This is where we are going. Grace to you, peace to you from him who is, who was, who is to come. And from the seven spirits, everyone say the seven spirits. So God has seven spirits. It just means in scripture the fullness of who he is. And I taught about the seven spirits. You'll find them in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. Do you want those by name? I'll give them to you by name. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the Lord. That is the sevenfold spirit of God. It is the fullness of who he is. All of this, according to the word, has been released from the spirit realm into the earth. We don't have to look for it. We don't have to go chasing somewhere as, as if it's locked up. No, it's already been released to the earth. Revelation chapter 4 declares this to us very clearly. To the seven spirits who are before the throne. This is very powerful prophetic language. We, we just don't have time to keep on going here. We'd be stuck here for eternity. This sevenfold ministry of the Spirit of God is going to take you to a place to the fullness where you are going to be whole. Not just in your spirit, not just words of confession. I'm talking about the realities that the confession is going to become, it's going to become manifested. The breakthrough you're looking will be coming reality. The healing you are looking for will be healed. The desire for him to take possession of you will be taken. The torments that are tormenting your soul right now will be removed. The aches and the pains will go away. I'm talking about the fullness of God in you. Manifesting in every dimension the spiritual reality that God wants you to possess. Only the order of Melchizedek can bring us into this. (laughs) That's in the kingdom of God. If I can put it up here like this, the kingdom of God. I'll use a few word phrases for you this morning. Why? Verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who washed us from our sins with his own blood. That's very powerful language, man. He has made us kings and priests. Underline that word phrase. What are you today? You're a king and you are a priest. To his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. People of God, we are kings and we are priests. And we've got to understand how we are going to operate in the kingdom of God. It can only be by one ministry, and that is the order of Melchizedek. I just want to give you some scripture here this morning. Hebrews chapter 3, verse... Oh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 5. 
We'll give you this one. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become a high priest, but it was he who said to him, you are my son today, I have begotten you. Everyone say, sonship. Jesus is the prototype of who you are becoming. He is the pattern son that is given in the mountain for us to look to. But the writer of Hebrews is giving us an analogy. He's giving us an understanding of the pattern that God wants all of humanity, especially the 10%, especially the tithe, those who are going to go into the place where the shepherd is going to refine them in this day of atonement. Only those who will enter in will understand the language of becoming a son. I'm not talking about adolescence experience. I'm not talking about people who are just born again and just mucking around in and out every day. They are born, they got their ticket to heaven, but I'm telling you about the sons, those who are going to go on to release what is in the spirit, what is in the heart of God to the fullness in the earth. The wholeness of what God wanted to do with mankind. That's the type of company I'm talking about this morning. So they give, this writer of Hebrews begins to write and he gives us an understanding of truly what our sonship is. He said, to the son, today I have begotten you. As he also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Everyone say the order of Melchizedek. In the kingdom of God, God has given us, or has given us, three smaller feasts. The first feast we are going to experience is called the Feast of Trumpets. This is where God is going to unlock, He is going to unloosen our mind to the revelation of God's Word. And so for the last 2,000, can I say for the last 24 years, God opened up a door to the church those who wanted to go in to understand the greater sacrifice in the order of Melchizedek, he's opened up a door for those to go in. There's a company of people that have made a strategic decision in their spirit. They know there's more in God than just the outer court experience. They know there's more than just the gift of the spirit of prophecy. Speaking in tongues, Words of edification, revelation, knowledge and understanding. Laying of hands on. They understand that, but they know there's even more than that, the gift of prophecy. There is the spirit of prophecy. The very testimony itself. And so God has been opening up a door. He opened up a door in 2022, a very interesting year in the calendar. It was the year that God opened up the Passover. Exodus 23, we're going to get into the word today. He opened up the final Passover. Oh, what Passover was this, Pastor Manny? It was the door for those who would put the blood on the lintels for the end time, for the final few steps that the law of death would be separated from some people. Oh, some people have applied the blood in a dimension where they understand that God has put the hyssop in and they took the branches, they took the revelation of the blood and they applied it to their doorpost. People, are, I, I told you this is new things now. I'm not going back. Because we are in the final makings of a company of people that the earth has never seen. The urgency of the hour that we're in, this is not about just church anymore. This is not just about the singing and the worship and coming on Sunday. This is greater than that. This move of God that was opened in the year 2022, God opened up this last time, the Feast of Passover, for a people to grab hold of the branches of the hyssophite. In the Old Testament, it was used as a healing agency. But really, the purpose of it was that they would apply the blood to allow the death angel to pass over them. Meaning that some people are not going to make covenant with the language of death anymore. They are going to refuse the language of death. They are not going to talk it. They are not going to be in covenant with it. They are going to speak the word that we have, have the blood. Oh, Pastor Manny, this is a bit out there. No, I'm talking about the law of immortality. Some people are not going to have the covenant with death anymore. They are going to speak and walk in life. 
You mean this thing going to change? You are going to put on immortality. The corrupt shall put on incorruptible. Oh, people of God, this is where we are going. And God is watching over. The order of Melchizedek is watching this tent, this tithe, this company of people that haven't mucked around in the outer court, haven't just wanted the dreams and the visions, but they've moved on. They understand that God is wooing his company of people to become like him. Amen. To be the brightness of his reflection. The expressed image. The possessors of heaven. <laughs> people, this is this company. The kingdom of God. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Exodus. Can I give you the scripture of Exodus? Praise the Lord. Exodus 12, verse 1, the year 2022. This is why it's so important now to be in the house of God. This is why it's so important for those who are going to go into the inheritance. The year 22 was the year that God applied in the earth the last Passover. And a company of people heard this. And they've heard the word. He said this in Exodus 12, 1. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of the month. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Everyone write, it is the new beginning. This was the new beginning of the new year of the new man. This was the beginning of the new beginnings. I-N-G-S. This was our new beginnings. This company of people that God called out in the year 2022, they got an understanding of the blood. And now they understand that God was separating them for the order of Melchizedek. Speak to all of the congregation of Israel, say, on the tenth of this month every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father, a lamb for his house. Praise the Lord. This tent is the tithe. It's this company of people that have gone on to this understanding for the final steps of maturity where the Spirit of God is going to work on them like no other creature. If the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbour to the next house, take it according to the number of the persons, according to each man's need. You shall make it your count for the lamb. The lamb shall be without blemish with a male of the first year. Everyone say, Jesus, Yeshua. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it unto the 14th day. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at the twilight. Everyone say the midnight hour. It's between dark and light. It's a period of time where there was darkness and there was also the awakening of the new day and this company of people didn't really know everything about God but in the spirit they knew something was coming. By faith they are going to kill. They're going to come to the understanding of the purpose of the Lamb. Coming out of darkness into the new day. They're going to move by faith. Mm. Thou shalt take some of the blood, put it on the door doorpost. Everyone say, the doorpost. Everyone say, me. You're the doorpost. This is in you. Yes, Jesus is the way. Yes, Jesus is the door. But this is a personal revelation. This is where you open up your heart, your spirit, to what God wants to do personally. 
Every man will do this, every woman will do this, this company. It will be applied to the general assembly. It will be applied to those all over the earth. But first and foremost, you must choose this work first. Oh. They shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread. Everyone say unleavened bread. We're eating the word without spot, without blemish. We're eating a word that's not infested with yeast, with sin. There is a word that is going to be spoken in its purest form. Take with it the bitter herbs that shall you eat. Do it and eat it raw. Do not eat it raw nor boil it in the water, but roast it in the fire. Everyone say, roast in the fire. That's the personal work of the Holy Spirit in this day. Everything will be consumed by fire. Its legs, its head, its entrails. You shall let none of it shall remain until the morning. And what remains of it morning, you shall burn it with fire, says the Lord. Verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night. I will strike all of the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man, both beast, against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood... Everyone write down that word phrase, only used in the Bible twice. When you see the blood, when you see the blood, when you see the blood, meaning that those who have applied the understanding of the living sacrifice, those who have applied the understanding of understanding that Jesus was the Lamb of God, They understand and they understood that the blood, when he died, that the blood means the life. The blood of the lamb. The lamb means, can I say, the sacrifice. And so when you put the two words together, the blood of the lamb of the lamb, lamb's blood, it is really the life of the sacrifice. They have the understanding applied to their spirit. They understand the purpose of why the blood had to be put in their life, why the blood had to be shed, why they partake in the communion with the blood of the Lamb. We're going up today. We're not talking something shallow here. The life of the sacrifice, they understood the life of the sacrifice to the point, the purpose of what God is trying to do with them. But see, we've only heard in Scripture about the Lamb. But the Lamb is also, according to Revelation 7, 1, 7, it also, there is a shepherd who will lead them to the fountains of waters of life. And I didn't know this. I thought that when we understand the life of the sacrifice of the blood of the Lamb that has made atonement for me in Passover, made atonement for me in Pentecost, but it also makes atonement for me in Tabernacle. But in Tabernacle, the blood works differently. It works different. Take the blood, take the branches of the hyssop it. Put it over the lintel. You know, in the Old Testament, what they would do, hyssop, it was a small little bush. I'll just give you a little bit of history about the hyssop. They used to eat it. It was for healing of the body. They'd take it. It was a medicinal use. What does that mean in the spirit, Pastor Manny? When you take the hyssop, which is the word of God, and you apply it to your life, there's going to come a, re a revelation of healing. Oh, what, what type of healing? The redemption of the entire body. That which was purchased is going to go through such a transformation right down to the cellular level of your DNA. Something is going to happen to you. Stop stalking sickness. Stop accepting sickness. Stop having a covenant with death. We've been taught in the church age the only way we're going to see our Father is if we die. 
And I want to be careful what I say here this morning. That has been a teaching because that's what they went into covenant with. People went into a covenant with death. That they thought that was the only way we're going to see our father. But there's a company of people that have not taken that covenant. They have refused to speak that type of language. They will not. You know, there was one day I was taken up in the spirit of the Lord and um, I saw this entity. He was transparent, totally transparent. He had a glow about him. It was like almost like an essence of blue. And when I seen him, this creature was phenomenal. This entity was immaculate. There was just flawless and I and I was looking at it with the Lord and I said Lord what is this and when I said that an image came out of the entity in the spirit it had 1,000 and then all of a sudden it was like understanding just dropped into my spirit the Lord said you're looking at your own spirit man this is what he looks like he was a thousand years old and he looked like he was 21 immaculate <laughs> immaculate flawless ageless people start thinking oh, well, how old were they in the book of the Bible Adam lived to 930 years of age oh no there's something wrong with the Bible how they wrote the days and the dates no they were living that long and because of the fall mankind the deterioration of our natural body because it was the effect of the spiritual realm when adam lost the spiritual authority with god that position in the spirit guess what happened in the earth i mentioned his frail old body started to respond because the spirit was no longer connected to the father and so he started to break down and after a few years lamesh and noah and tira and all these other lads were coming forth his descendants And they were getting lesser and lesser in age, 300, 800, whatever it was, right down now that God said, in the end, God said, I'm going to put a cap on mankind. I'm going to actually put a date to him. I'm going to give him now 120 years in the natural dimension. God put that there. God put it there. Scientists are looking around all around the world for the law of immortality. Billionaires are trying to discover it. The law of immortality already sits in your spirit, says the word of God. For the spirit that raised him up is in you. That same spirit that raised him up. The law of immortality. It's sitting in your spirit. Already inside of you. But you don't know how to activate it. You don't know how to use it. You don't understand it. So God is going to pour out understanding. But he needed a company of people to break from the covenant of death. <laughs> In the Old Testament, we're only seeing a glimpse of the order of Melchizedek. A company of people that are not going to commune with death. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you. When I strike the land of Egypt, there will be no plague on this company of people. The spirit of death, you will have no covenant with it. God will give you life. I'm not looking for the grave to see my master. I believe, as the word has said, that you and I guess where we're going into. Corruptible must put on incorruptible. Mortal shall, must put on immortality. You and I must be conformed and transformed into the image of the Son. Jesus was the first prototype. Give us a glimpse of what it looks like to walk with the Father. Not up in the Spirit, in the earth. You are right there? Verse 14, so this day shall be to you a memorial. You shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting, everyone say everlasting. The everlasting ordinance of our God. Verse 22, jump down quickly. I don't have much time to go through. You shall take a bunch of hyssop. Underline the hyssop. We're going to take a bunch of the word of God. <laughs> it's the word of God. We're going to take a whole bunch of the word of God. 
We're not going to just take one passage of Scripture. We're not going to just take a, the, the, pen, the Passover experience. No, Lord, we're not just going to take the Pentecost experience. No, we're going to take the whole volume of this book. And we're going to dip it in the blood of the Lamb. The reality of what God wants to do with you is more than the... It's more than the gift of tongue. More than that. He said, take the hyssop, hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, strike the lintel, the mindset of God's people. It's in the mindset. God is striking the mindset. The two doorposts on the blood that is in the basin. None of you shall go out of the door of the house until the morning. The Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptian. The word Egyptian there in the Hebrew means one who limits God. You can be born again and you can still limit God. You can be born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, activated, speaking in tongues, prophesying over everyone's life and you can still be limited in your belief. But up in this dimension, when we move up into this dimension, into the kingdom of God, God opens up to us first the understanding of the Feast of Trumpets. He gives us the insight of what we really are going for. None of you shall go out of the door of the house until the morning, for the Lord will pass through, strike the Egyptian, and when he sees the blood... <laughs> on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over you. He will not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. The covenant of death will be broken. How? Because some, this company of people have applied the blood in the highest dimension. In its totality in its wholeness, in its completeness. We only get a portion here in Passover. We only get a portion in Pentecost 60-fold. In this feast, in the Feast of Trumpets, in the Feast of Atonement, Kingdom of God, we get it in, in its totality, in its fullness. But God even knows in that dimension what He will do. He will give it to us and administrate it to us until the day breaks. It's the making where God will do this work. Are you all right this morning? Oh, praise the Lord. This is what God wants to do. This is where He is taking His people. He is taking us to a place where we are going to be a possession of heaven and on earth. And the only one who can do that is the order of Melchizedek. If I could write it up here. Do I have a rag or someone? Anyone got a rag there? Because I want you to see this. Where did, I, where did I go? Thank you, Maggie. Rub that all off. I want to give you a new graft. Take it all off. Praise God. Let's give Maggie a clap. I'll put this like this. The kingdom of God. This is where we're at. This is the feast that we're in. God is going to give us these three feasts. The Feast of Trumpets, it's the prophetic schools where we get the eyes and ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Puts us into position for the next feast. It's called the Day of Atonement. It's where two become one. It's to the place where we're not walking in unity. It's even greater than unity. It's greater than agreement with the Word. It's oneness. Then we're going to enter into the place of glorification. You've been justified in, the, in Passover. In Pentecost, you have been sanctified and you are still being sanctified. In the realm of this day, the kingdom of God, you are moving into the glorification. But God has got to work on you. So God needs somebody who understands that they are king and a priest after the order of Melchizedek, where God can begin to apply the principles to your life as a shepherd. For what, Pastor Manny? Till you mature. 
and you've got to personally accept this. Over the kingdom, I want to say there is only one priesthood that will sit over this company of people. It is the order of Melchizedek. Melech means king in the, in the, in the Hebrew. Zedek means of righteousness. The order of Melchizedek will put you in a position as kings of righteousness. Not only was he a king, he also was the king of Salem. Everyone say Salem. Salem was, it means in the Hebrew, the place of peace. God is going to bring you into the place of Salem. Understanding the righteous rule and reign of God and the peace of God that he has always intended for your life. Melchizedek wasn't just a king, he was a priest. After the Most High God, according to the book of Genesis. Also, he was a prophet. <laughs> this is where you get the prophet, the priest, and the king. There were three other men in the Word of God that moved in this dimension. There was Melchizedek himself. And I... And I want to speak a little bit about this. There was David, who was after a priest, also after the order of Melchizedek, according to Psalms 57. And also, Yeshua Hamashi. Jesus was made after the order of Melchizedek. Three men that operated as a prophet, a priest, and a king in the earth. Can you walk another... Maybe 15 with, Pastor? Yeah, yeah. This is, I, I just want to get us in a mindset where God is taking us. Because the maturing of the day that God is taking us is not going to be having all the revelation. Mm -mm. It's not about that. How God is going to do this, the Melchizedek order is going to oversee us until we become mature. That's the order that's going to bring us through the makings. So we need to understand how the order of Melchizedek is going to work in our life. Because according to Revelation chapter 1, we're kings and priests. We're kings and priests. And so God here is going to school us in the prophetic understanding of his word to get us to walk into a place of oneness. This is the place of the burnt offering. And according to Numbers 10.10, 10, the Spirit of the Lord said in the Old Testament, He said in the Feast of Trumpets in Numbers 10.10, 10, He said, blow the trumpet over the burnt sacrifice. So the Lord is schooling us in the prophetic realm to do what? Not to blow open all revelation everywhere. Point it over the burnt sacrifice. Guess who's the burnt sacrifice? Jesus is, yeah. You... This is a personal decision. The burnt offering was the only offering in the Old Testament that was not a commandment for the people to bring forward. It was out of your own free will whether you brought your own offering, the burnt offering. This is your life. Jesus presented himself as the first burnt offering, as an offering acceptable unto the Lord. He went all the way. He showed us how to do this. But God wants you now in the same order. Personal walk is to become a living sacrifice. Casual Christians and believers will not go down this path. This is for the tenth. This is for those where the head will be joined to the body. This is this company of people that are going into maturity. I believe there's this company right here. You've made a decision in your own life, Lord, that I am wanting to go on into a place of maturity. I'm thankful for Passover and Pentecost, but I understand there's something more. Numbers 10.10, 10, blow the trumpets over the burnt sacrifice. Woo! The burnt offering in the Hebrew is the word Allah. I want to give you a little bit of understanding. Allah. Allah, this word means the ascension or to be ascending. That's what happens. In the natural, when they would blow over the sacrifice, the sacrifice until the point it was consumed, 
what would happen with all the, the aroma, the essence of the flesh? It would ascend up into the father's nostrils. He would go like this. Mmm. Smells good. In the spirit, what is it? It's when the flesh, the works of the flesh, in our own life, we've decided to say, God, I don't want any more of that life. I am over the flesh. It can't do anything more. I've got to let it, I'm going to lay it down on the altar to be consumed. The works of the flesh is according to the word of God you will find in Galatians. It's very clear. Flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom. He's not talking about people that have, have died and gone to the grave. Flesh and blood is a terminology meaning that you've ceased from your own works. Being murderous, envious, jealousy, all of these horrible things. That's the character of the flesh. Do Christians do that? You betcha. You ever seen a jealous person in the church? Yeah, I have. You ever seen somebody with a murderous spirit? Yeah, I have. But the reason why God has permitted this is because he's trying to get us to willfully make a choice to go to the place of the sacrifice. Personal choice. When we do this, this nature of the flesh will be consumed by fire, by God alone. Guess what happens in you? You're in a position for transformation now. You're in a position for transformation. The smell that's coming off of you is a beautiful smell, the aroma to the Spirit of God. God can't stand flesh, the smell of it, the works of it. He, he can't stand it. Envious, liars, jealous, all this type of murderers, bitterness, hate, haters. All of that other character, God can't stand it. He despises it. So he said, if you come to me as a burnt offering and offer yourself and allow me to consume that offering as a priest does only the priest could do this as a priest in the kingdom you will put yourself to that place see this is a personal test now this is a personal journey some go up some go back some get to the altar and then they stop they back up then oh it's getting too hot here I go up, oh yeah, but I still like this about my life. Uh-uh, you got to go all. You know that Abraham was 137 years old when he took Isaac, when he took him up into the mountain? People teach in Sunday school that Isaac was a little boy. He was 36 years of age when he went into the mountain of Mount Moriah. He was a fully grown man. Well, what happened? They both agreed in themselves they agreed to become a living sacrifice. This is what's going to happen. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are going to put your yourself, you're going to put yourself as a burnt offering to the Lord to say, I'm sick of flesh working in me. That way, a sweet-smelling aroma can descend up to the Father. Why? You're going into the place of glorification. Glorification here, I just want to give you a glimpse of it. It's where you are actually called a mature son. It's where heaven, everything in the heaven that you speak at your spirit, is actually possessed in the earth. It doesn't sit up in your mind, it's actually in the earth. It's not a thought. It's not something spiritual floating inside of your spirit. No, you possess it now in the heavens, in the earth. Can I give you a scripture on that? Turn to the book of Exodus. Only in your presence. Exodus 24 verse 9. This is Moses going into the mountain of the Lord. Moses went up. Verse 9 of 24 of Exodus. Aaron, Nabad, and Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel, they saw God of Israel. There was under his feet, everyone say, under God's feet, as it were a paved work of a sapphire stone. This is very important language, man. 
Sapphire stone is very important. Sapphire stone speaks about the kingdom and its throne room rights. People that are going to possess it, they're going to know what the sapphire stone is. They have possession of everything in the spirit. They have possessed it in the earth now. He said, when we saw him, his feet as were it was a paved work by sapphire stone. It was like the very heavens in its clarity. Meaning, everything that was in the heavens was now seen in the earth dimension. Everything that Melchizedek has ever wanted, everything that God has ever wanted for humanity was no longer just sitting up in the spirit dimension. It was now in the earth. That's what a son's going to do. A son is going to possess everything that is spiritual. Every blessing that God has ever blessed him with, up in his little spirit, he's actually going to possess it in the earth in a body. Ooh. Anyone here want to be a possessor of heaven and earth? Yeah. Yes, Lord. That is your birthright. Jesus prayed the prayer and he says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it already is in the spirit. Let it happen in the earth. Let them become possessors of all the promises that are yes and amen in me to be possessed in the earth. But we've got to walk on with the Lord. Revelations chapter 7, 7. 717. I want to just give you some scripture around here. Oh, we've got five minutes. Listen to this, 717. 717 of the book of Revelation. For the Lamb, everyone underline the Lamb. When we first came into this move of God in the kingdom, we started to understand the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. God was giving us prophetic eyes to see that the blood had the life and the lamb. We understood now the sacrifice and its purpose. So we've gotten that. But now God is moving us from this Feast of Trumpets into the Day of Atonement. And the Day of Atonement, yes, it's going to be dead on arrival. Yes, it's going to be the place of the crucifixion. All of these things you can put there. I'm just giving you another facet of the word. But here, he says, not only do they have the blood of the Lamb, but they have something else with them. For the Lamb who was in the midst of the throne, everyone underlined the throne, because that's the place of governance. The kingdom is the place of governance. God is not going to give his governance to casual believers. I know this is a heavy word, but I'm trying to prepare those who are going to go on. Those who understand what it's going to take that want the birthright. The lamb who is in the midst of the throne, underline, will shepherd. Underline the word shepherd. Not only will we have the revelation of the life of the sacrifice, we will have the understanding of what it is to be shepherded by the master himself. He, we will walk where he walks. Guess where he's leading us, people? Guess where the shepherd's going to lead us? The shepherd eventually leads all the sheep. Guess where he leads them? To the slaughter. He's going to lead you to the place of death. Oh no, Pastor, that sounds terrible. The death of your own flesh. And when I mean your flesh, not this here. Not, not your lymphatic system. The largest system on your body. No, 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 no. The word flesh here is referring to the works of the flesh. He is going to take you to the place of your death of the works of the flesh where all the envy, bitterness, ugliness, murderous, lies, cheating, deceiving, all of that horribleness is going to be dealt with at the place of where he chooses for you to die. Oh, where's that, Pastor Manny? The cross. He's taking you to the cross. Whew. 
this beautiful shepherd is going to walk you to the place of your death. Only those who understand this, only those who are willing to be a priest will understand the purpose of where he's leading them, the shepherd. To everyone else, it will sound stupid. To everyone else, they will not want to be led by the shepherd, the overseer of our soul. That's what he's trying to oversee. He is going to take us to this place to allow the work of his cross to be applied to us in all reality. For the shepherd will lead them to the fountains of waters. Oh, there's so much just in that. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Genesis, quickly. Genesis 14. Just want to give you one more scripture. Genesis 14, 18. This is a personal walk where you are going to be challenged by the shepherd to follow him. You're going to face some personal encounters. So strong in your life, I tell you what, I thought I could never be tested like I was tested, man. You're going to have personal testings. And when I mean personal, even with your wife, if you're married, even with your children, if you have children, even with your pastor, with your pastor, you're going to have personal testings, man. See, Abraham, we all love this story about Abraham meeting Melchizedek. This is such a sad story. And yet it's such a victorious story. Abraham here, his great niece, Lot was taken captive. And so Abraham's here. He says, you know what? I'm going to take 300 of my men plus and I'm going to go after him. Because all these other bad lads were there. There were five other kings there. And um, we know in the word of God, I just want to get this up for you, sorry. We know that Abraham went with the other four kings and they went to the valley of the kings to have a battle. And according to the word of Genesis 14, 1, can I have the musicians up? It came to pass in the days of uh, Ampal, king of Shinar, Aratot, king of um, Elsa, Chedlamel, king of Elam, Tidal, king of the nations, that they made war with Bera the king, Sodom, Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Simbad, king of the Ad uh, Adma, Shemem, king of the uh, Zudium, and the king of Bala, that is of Zor. They all joined together in the valley of Sidim, that is the Salt Sea. And they all went there to battle and they stole all of the children, took all of the golds and treasures, and Abraham hears about it. And so Abraham hears about the king of Elam, according to verse 9. Abraham went up against them in the valley of Sidam, against Chedor Lamor, king of Elam, um, Amphra, king of Shinar, the um, Arctal, king of um, Eliezer, the four kings against the five kings. In the valley of Sidon was the asphalt pits, the kingdoms of Sodom. They took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, verse 11, and the provisions, they went their way. Abraham's brother's son um, dwelt in Sodom and his goods, and they departed. But someone escaped, and they said, Abraham, the Hebrew, he dwelt under a Meribah, a mer tree. He said, the Amorite, the brother of Issachar, the brother of Enna, they were allies of Abraham. When Abraham heard of his brother was taken captive, he armoured the 318 trained servants who were born in his own house and went to pursue them. There's a whole reason why we're reading this, because I want to get this suit. It says that he got there, he brought back all of the goods, he brought back his brother Lot and his goods, as well as all the women and the people. And it says that the king of Sodom went out to meet him in the valley of Shiva, that's the king's valley, after he returned from the David of Chedlamor, and the kings were with him. Everyone say Chedlamor. This one king was ruling over five other kings, and Abraham had four other kings. So they all went to battle. Lot got taken, and Abraham reckoned, I'm going to go bring him back. He went to battle. But he went against a king called Chedlamor. 
You know who Chetler Moore was? He was Abraham's great, 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 great grandfather. He was his own family. Abraham had to face personal things in his own life. His great, 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 great grandfather, he had to go war with him. And it says that Chetler Moore from Elam, it says that he had five other buddies with him. You know all them words in Genesis chapter 1? You know what their words mean in the Hebrew? Listen to this. Listen to this. Their names mean this. Darkness, deception, savagery, merciless, producing after the tree of good and evil. Abraham was going up against a tree that was producing good and evil. It was in his own descendants from his great, 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 great grandfather. It was so personal for Abraham to go into battle that day. You are going to go into some personal things, man. Why? Because the Lord wants to deal with them. The Lord wants to set you free. You know who Chedler Moore Alam was? Great, 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 great grandfather to Abraham. Guess who his father was? Chedler Moore of Elam. Guess who his father was? His father here was Melchizedek. Guess who Melchizedek was here? It was Shem. No, his own, own son. We only have been taught that Melchizedek is a name of a person. It wasn't used like that in Hebrew text. No, no, it wasn't. Melchizedek is actually the title given to a person who operates in the priesthood of the Most High God. Today I could say Melchizedek Anthony Edwards. David Melchizedek. <laughs> Jesus Melchizedek. It was the title that was put upon them when they were the servants of the Most High God. <sighs> Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God's Most High. He blessed Abraham and he said, Blessed be Abraham, God of the Most. Possessor, underline that word. When Melchizedek's blessing is in your life, when you go to this place with Melchizedek, guess what he's going to do? It's a slow working. You will become the possessor of heaven, all spiritual blessings, but it will be manifested in the earth. You are a possessor of heaven today. If you are after the order of Melchizedek, you will possess not only in your little spirit, you'll say it, I'm healed. That's good. You're saying it in your spirit. It's good. That really has to come out in the earth. Your spiritual position must be equal with your earthly condition. Write that down. Your spiritual condition, your spiritual position must be equal with your earthly condition. We are talking it by faith. I'm healed, I'm saved, I'm doing good works. Well, that's good. But you know what qualifies you to be the priest of the Most High God? It's your earthly condition. You cannot say that you are the righteousness of God and you are a filthy liar and you are a horrible person to work with at work and you run around and gas bag about everyone. No, you are not. Unfortunately, it's in your spirit, but you have not gone on the journey of being taken to the place of the death yet. Until that day happens in your life, you will not possess any of the heavenly dimensions in its totality. This is the order of Melchizedek. This is where we are going. This is what happens in the kingdom of God. This is the kingdom, people. This is where you're going. I think we're about here at the moment. Right here, just step one. <laughs> there were six steps to the throne, according to 1 Kings. Solomon's temple, six steps to the throne before he got up to the ivory stone. Ivory meaning the place of death. Gold, it was over covered with gold. It means the place of um, glory. Six steps. Crucifixion, death and burial. 
Then you go into the tomb, you become also quickened, raised and seated with Christ. Six steps you've got to go through personally. Are you all right this morning? We did pretty good. 38 minutes in the Word. Pretty good. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Let's stand. Two thousand and twenty two was the final Passover. I'm just so grateful, church, for the journey God took us on. We could have been anywhere right now. We could have been doing the same old thing. And I'm not you know, I love doing works, I love it. I you know, we still feed the poor, we clothe the children, we feed them, provide education, we do all of that. That doesn't cease. But we also must end. There's a higher calling for God. This is the calling to manifest the kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. As fully mature sons. Who's ready for the journey? You're going to face some personal, intense battles. But I want you to know that He is full of grace. He is full of mercy. All you've got to do is talk to Him while you're going through it. I tell you what, sometimes I was found crying in the rooms all hours of the night saying, Lord, why me? Father, why, why is this taking place? And the Lord, he was just overseeing me. It's going to be all right. You're going to make it through. You've got to keep talking to him through the journey. It's intense. Jesus, he did that through the... Jesus, the last six steps that he took, the Garden of Gethsemane, man, he was only talking to the Father. That's what you've got to do. Build this place of prayer and worship with God because He's going to walk with you while everything else is being stripped off your back. All of the old things that no one will ever be able to claim to you again. Amen. When they see you, they'll be saying, who's this fella now? Who's this woman now? This is the child of the Most High God. Hallelujah. There's a beautiful song.